International Meditation Center is to be established in Phuket. The foundation stone laying ceremony for an international meditation center took place on Wednesday afternoon at 15.09 hours, which was believed to be an auspicious time. The new retreat facility to be built within Tha Chai Temple next to the Tao Te Pesetri Bridge is estimated to cost about 25 million baht, with construction expected to be completed within this year, in time for the national celebrations on the auspicious occasion of His Majesty the King's 7th cycle birthday anniversary on the 5th of December 2011. The project is carried out by the World Fellowship of Buddhists in conjunction with the Thailand's Office of National Buddhism and the Phuket Provincial Buddhism Office. President of the World Fellowship of Buddhists, Pan Wanatmeti, believes that the meditation center will greatly serve international communities in the Andaman region, especially Phuket being a major tourist destination, is now home to multinationalities from around the world. New British ambassador paid a call on the Phuket governor while the discussion centered around safety issues. New British ambassador to Thailand, His Excellency Mr. Asif Ahmad, along with the new British consul Michael Hancock and British honorary consul to Phuket Martin Carpenter, paid a call on Phuket Governor Tri Akara De Cha on Monday. This is the first time the ambassador visited Phuket after his posting started in Bangkok. Safety issues were the main subjects discussed during the meeting. Mr. Ahmad stated that some 850,000 British nationals travel to Thailand each year, with more than 50% visiting Phuket. The ambassador also expressed his concerns over the island's public transport, especially tuk-tuk taxis and jet skis, and proposed that the embassy is willing to cooperate and play its part in resolving any problems. That would include informing their citizens about the safety helmet laws and jet ski rentals following the provincial authorities' regulations. The Phuket governor told the ambassador that the authority has a policy to look after tourists and that the central government has allocated a budget for the resort island to improve infrastructure and facilities to accommodate the tourism growth. He also pointed out that British travelers are usually quality tourists and cause very little trouble for the island. The day before his meeting, the ambassador and consuls chat to the local Phuket press at the Millennium Hotel in Patong on various issues. Let's look and listen in to some of the conversations of focusing on traffic laws and road safety. Whether the British tourists traveling in, in Europe uh, or within the UK or even as far away as in, in Thailand is that just because you've uh, left home doesn't mean to say that you can forget the basics in terms of uh, wearing a seatbelt, wearing a helmet, uh, what happens when you uh, drink beyond the capacity that, that you have. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so our first job really must be to try and get the message across that people take responsibility for their own safety first. Secondly, in a place like Thailand and other places, uh, it's the issue of, of compliance with the law. I mean, it has long been the law here that motorcyclists should wear helmets, but it's a law probably more in, uh, ignored than, than obeyed. And we would certainly be encouraging the, the police and others to, to enforce that and to make sure that, that people who rent out motorbikes simply can't rent a bike out to somebody who A, does not have uh, uh, some sort of license to prove he's qualified and B, can, uh, is issued with, a, with not just a helmet but a helmet that actually works. So I think yes, it is it's, it's an important part of my message uh, to the authorities here but also to the travelling public. What, what about the particular and also the issue of standard fares for public transport was also touched upon. To any form of public transport and taxis, tuk tuks, this is a, a global thing. And, and I remember many years ago, Bangkok used to be a problem where it was a bit of a gamble when you got into a cab, whether you'd uh, arrive at your destination on the shortest route or whether you'd be going right to various gem uh, stores and other places before you actually got to your destination. Those instances are reducing and there's greater compliance with metering. In many other tourist resorts, there are published charts which actually give you, if it's fixed, it's fixed. In some places, it's extremely expensive. I remember holidaying in Mauritius where it was, the tariff was there, but it was 
extremely expensive to go from A to B. I think there is an issue here with the uh, I know that they've now agreed on a maximum fare, but that still does not eradicate the problem. Uh, I think, as any tourist uh, should do before, is try and negotiate the fare before you step into the, the vehicle, rather than discover at the end of the journey uh, what it should be. Obviously, in following Martin, as your honorary consul's advice or reports on the meetings with the government every three months. I think that's a, that's a really good thing, and, and uh, right at the outset I've been saying that, that without the Honorary Consul, that without Martin here, we simply wouldn't be able to deal with the needs of our citizens, both the ones who live here and uh, the ones who travel as, as tourists. And what that does, when, when the Honorary Consuls go collectively, is that, people, that the authorities can't simply say, oh, well, that's just a British problem, or it's a European problem, or whatever. They, what they hear is a collective uh, voice, whether it's immigration queues or, or problems. But also, I think it's true to say that honor consuls don't go in just simply to complain. I think they're part of the, the industry in a sense that everybody basically wants Thailand, Phuket, to thrive as a, as a tourist destination because if, if it's doing well, then travelers and residents here will have a better time anyway. So I don't think we go in there, uh, and our, certainly uh, Martin doesn't go into the, the Thai authorities here with a list of everything that's wrong. It's also to say, well, how can we help you to do what it is that you're, you're trying to do? A good example is something that we've been concerned about in, uh, in the embassy, is what actually happens to victims of sexual assault, whether they're men or women, but it's, uh, there have been instances of, of younger women. Now, the issue there is that even if a, the Thai police want to be helpful, they haven't really had the training or the, un, or, or the uh, examples from other countries to sort of say this is what we actually do with people who are traumatized uh, and, and th these are the, are the best practices and we're hoping that over the next few months that's one thing we might be able to help the Thai police with. But that's another example of having a not just a negative agenda but something that's cons constructive as well. The Phuket governor however has worked with parties and agencies concerned to tackle such issues already. Now turning to other issues, Phuket tourism operator foresees promising outlook for the industry while Phuket governor is leading a group of people to is leading, excuse me, is leading a group to participate in the ITB in Berlin, Germany. With the global economy picking up, more European travelers <coughs> are visiting again, even though they are still cautious with spending, according to Purit Madwongsa the Phuket Tourist Association Vice President. He further stated that at present, Australians, Russians, Koreans and Europeans are the main markets, but Australians from February in particular showed a major increase as Phuket currently receives around 28 flights per week from Australia. During March 5 to 13, Phuket Governor Tri Akarat De Cha will lead a group of officials and tourism businesses to showcase local tourism in the International Tourism Bourse, the ITB in Berlin. The world's biggest travel trade show, the ITB 2011, is now in its 46th year. Thailand has participated every year since 1976. Several tourism businesses and tourism officials from Pattaya, Phuket, Samui, Krabi, and Panga will be participating to promote their respective locations which have recently undergone many major tourism-related infrastructure improvements. Phuket invites people to contribute to Lights Out Phuket, an initiative to help save the earth. On March 26, 2011, an anticipated total of more than 1 billion people from 223 countries around the world will switch off all non-essential lights and electronic appliances between 8.30 and 9.30 p.m. local time in support of the fifth annual Earth Hour. In Phuket, the main campaign will be in the lane of the Royal Paradise Hotel in the tourist beach of Patong, designated to actively join in the global effort. The campaign will be launched in the area on March 24th. The local authority is seeking cooperation from households, business premises, and government organizations offices to participate in the campaign. The provincial authority office will measure and compare the power usage rate
before and after the lights out period. What started as a project between the WWF and the Sydney Morning Herald in 2007 has become a global tradition and the 2011 Earth Hour is expected to be bigger than ever before as part of an ongoing campaign to raise awareness about climate change. Vehicle number plate auction in Phuket earned 23.54 million baht. The two-day auction for lucky number plates took place over last weekend at the Metropole Hotel in Phuket, which earned the Land Transport Department 23.54 million baht. The event offering the KN plates with attractive numbers such as 9999, 8888, drew vast interest from Thais and foreigners. Presiding over the opening ceremony, Phuket Governor Dri Akaradecha participated in the auction and paid 250,000 baht for KN1111, while the Provincial Police Commander, Police Major General Pikat Tantipong, bid for KN, excuse me, KKN9 at 240,000 baht. The director of the Land Transport Office, Kanok Siri Panishkan, reported that a total of 310 number plates were offered for auction, and this was the highest for southern Thailand. In Phuket, the highest offer was 1.4 million baht for KN9999, followed by KN8888 at 1 million baht. Proceeds from the auction goes towards the, rate, uh, the road safety fund. Wow, that cost more than a car. Giant clams released in Panga. 300 giant clams were released into the Andaman Sea of Tai Mung Beach in Panga province this week. The event was part of the province's activities in celebrations of His Majesty the King's 84th birthday anniversary. Panga Governor Tamrong Jerungun hopes that the event not only adds more clams to the sea, but also promote awareness among residents and fishermen about natural resources conservation in their community. You can also see uh, our text and videos later on the website http colon double slash thainews.prd.go.th slash news english slash and youtube.com slash anima news